Hi everyone. Today I'll show you how to add conditional branching to your workflows using the if else operator. I'll start by adding an HTTP trigger to my workflow and I'll generate a test event with a path of foo. For this example, I'll branch based on the path of the incoming event. Next, I'll select the if else control flow operator and I'll use it to add three branches to my workflow. I'll configure the first branch to execute if the path is foo or bar. The rule builder makes it easy to define conditions and you can combine conditions or groups of conditions using Boolean logic. You can access those options from the kebab menu on the right and you can toggle whether to and or or different conditions or groups by clicking on the Boolean operator. To add another branch, I just need to click on the plus button and configure the rules. Just remember that if else is a single path branching operator, so the order in which you define the branches will affect the execution. What that means is that the first branch with matching criteria is the branch that will execute. Finally, I'll keep the else branch to catch and handle any exceptions. Next, I'll run a test to determine which path would execute for my current test data. I can see that the path on the left would be executed, so I'll add some more steps there. You can run any step within a branch, including code steps and pre-built actions, and you can even return HTTP responses or nest other control flow blocks. However, the pattern that I want to demonstrate here is how to surface data from a branch back up to the parent flow. While you can continue execution in a parent flow after a nonlinear operation, you can't directly reference steps that were within a branch. The reason for that is that the execution of nonlinear steps is conditional, which means that that reference may not always exist. Pipedream solves this by exporting a return value from each branch. Specifically, the return value of the last step of each branch is exported as the return value of the if else block. This makes it available to reference in the parent flow. For this example, I'll add a code step to the parent flow and I'll reference the return value of the if else block, which is the same as the return value of the last step in the branch. We recommend that the last step of each branch normalize the data so that you can reference that data consistently in all future steps of the workflow. Next, I'll add some steps to build out the other branches. I'll return a string from the second branch to keep the data structure consistent with the exports of the first branch. Since the step is not in the execution path, Pipedream informs me that the results may not be reliable. What that means is that the results may not match what would have happened if this branch were actually executed based on the rules above. I'll show you how to test alternate conditions in just a moment so you can validate your workflow behavior before you deploy. Before I do that, I'll add some steps to the else branch to send myself a Slack message and terminate the workflow if none of the other conditions are met so I can handle any exceptions. Okay, I'm almost ready to deploy. Before I do, I'll test my workflow under different conditions. To do that, I'll generate test events and then click Test Workflow. I'll simply repeat those steps to validate each of the different branches. I can also test incrementally by testing step by step or by testing individual sections. When I'm done testing, I'll click deploy to run this workflow in production. The live workflow will be triggered on any new events and I can select those events to inspect the execution. So I hope this video helps you understand how to get started with conditional branching on Pipedream. Please let us know if you have any feedback, and we can't wait to see what you build with this powerful feature. Thanks.